Hello everyone, this is Junaid here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about top five programming languages to develop games. So without any delay, let's take a look at today's agenda. We'll start this session by understanding what is game development. Following that, we shall see a few of the popular programming languages to develop games. Then I shall answer the most commonly asked questions. Can I develop games on my own? Before we begin, consider subscribing to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on trending technologies. Also, if you're looking for online training certification in Python, check out the link given in the description box below. So what is game development? Game development is basically an art. Here, it involves generation and creation of concepts, or you can also say a storyline followed by development and testing of a user interface. Gaming industry is a bit different from others. Here, developers not only have to focus on developing user-friendly interface, but at the same time, it is important to think about gaming mechanics, reward points, player engagement, and level design. So what I'm trying to say here is, what's the use if a game has an amazing user interface, but a poor storyline? This would obviously fail to capture users' attention, right? So it is very important to combine art and programming part of the game. Speaking about a programming language, According to Wikipedia, there are over 700 programming languages out there, but only a handful of them can be used to develop game. Moving ahead, let us now discuss a few of the popular programming languages to develop game. The first and most obvious one is C++. This is because it's fast and it compilers and optimizers are solid. Apart from that, you also get a lot of control over memory management. As C++ is a very old language, it has a well-written documentation, and extensive libraries which come in handy for designing and powering complex graphics. Next most popular language is C Sharp. This language was initially developed in year 2000, and the main advantage of this language is that it makes use of XNA framework. This framework provides set of tools and runtime environment to develop games for Xbox and Microsoft platforms. C Sharp is also used for developing games using Unity Game Engine. In the domain of game development, Lua is also widely used as a scripting language by programmers. In 2003, a poll conducted by gamedev.net showed Lua to be the most popular scripting language for game programming. The reason for this is because of its fast execution and short learning curve. Now you might be wondering, right, is Lua faster than C++? Well, Lua is fast, but in its own way. What I'm trying to say here is, textual files in Lua is not directly interpreted. Instead, it is compiled into a bytecode, which then runs on a Lua virtual machine. The compilation process is typically invisible to the user and is performed during runtime, but it can also be done offline in order to increase loading performance or to reduce memory footprint. Game programmers also use Java because it supports multi-threading and sockets. So what happens with this is with multi-threading, system memory and CPU compute is used in an efficient way. On top of this, we all know Java runs on a virtual machine, thus the application develop will be easier to distribute. The next best choice you see is Python. Like C++ and Java, Python also offers object-oriented approach, but with simple syntax and execution. You see, unlike previous mentioned programming language, Python is very slow, right? Thus, a complex game is never developed solely using Python. Only a certain API or framework of Python will be used. The major strength of Python in game development is rapid prototyping. What I'm trying to say here is, with just a single command, we can create our gaming package. For example, if you want to develop a game for an Android, all you need to do is use Bulldozer API. So here there is a command called as Bulldozer.init, which when run, create an APK file. Now that we have discussed list of programming languages, I'm sure you might be wondering, can I develop my own game? Well, the answer for this is simply yes. If you're a big nerd to the game development, Python is the best programming language to start off. You see, Python provides various types of frameworks to develop games. For example, PyQt5, Pygame, Kiwi, etc. And the most popular framework to develop game using Python is Pygame. Let me now move to my code editor and show you how we can develop a simple Flappy Bird game using Python. All right, so as you can see here, we have come to a code editor and there are a couple of lines of code. Before I explain you this code, right? So let us understand what we want to achieve over here. You see, first and foremost thing that we want to do over here is to create an application window. So over here in Pygame, if you want to initialize your application window, first off, you have to initialize the Pygame package. Okay, 
And once you're done with that, you're supposed to create a window, which is actually a root window. And we can have only one root window here. And over here, we are supposed to provide this, the size and the shape of our application window. Okay, let's see where we have implemented that. So as you can see here, right? So first off, we have initialized our Pygame package. And then we have created our root window. And we have set our display or our application window size to be 288 cross 512 pixels. So now people usually think game development, we are trying to use some kind of graphics or something. But in general, what's trying to happen over here is we have images and we're trying to manipulate the position of those images. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is like consider that you have a window over here. All right. And you have an image over here. Okay. Let's take an example of this image to be a tree. Now I want this tree to move to this position here. Now, if I directly change the position, right, it will look like, you know, I have manipulated the size. I don't want that. I want it to look like as if, you know, it has traversed all the way over here. So in order to do that, what I'll do is I'll just manipulate the position or the coordinates of our X and Y of this image. And the steps would be small. And when they are repeated or when the same step is like, you know, small steps of increment has been done over a couple of times, at an appropriate speed, it will look like as if the tree has been moving towards this point X over here. Okay, so before we can get into this game logic, right? We have to import all our resources. So what do you mean by resources over here? Well, resources are nothing but the images that get down here. Just make sure you keep this in mind. Whenever you have these resources, right? You have kept them all within the same application folder. So coming back to our main discussion, what we will be doing in our application here. So first off, we'll initialize our application window and give the size to 88 comma 512. And then we obviously have to have a background image, right? So we'll load our image. Now this loading our image is different from adding an image to the widget. So how this works is first off, you have an image here. You have an image in folder. Like for example, you have an image over here in a resources folder. So you will add this to this game engine. Okay, so now you have basically loaded this image. So this image format would be something like JPJ or whatever it is. We can use this dot convert, which would automatically convert your image to the format that it desires. But now it still has not added this image to our application window. So what we'll do is we'll just use a blit function. Okay, to add any image to this application window. So let's now see how we are implementing this part. So first off, as I've mentioned, we are going to have our image that is background image. We'll have a base image, then we'll have an image of a bird and pipes. Okay, so what basically is happening here is as I load this and add this to our window, first of all, we'll have a background image, and then we'll have an image over here, which is constantly moving towards the left. Okay, and then we'll have a bird, and the way this bird can move is along the x axis. The way the bird can move over here is along the y axis, it can move up and down okay and then there will be a couple of pipes okay and these pipes will have a rectangle which would be covering this part over here something like this and similar to this we'll also have a rectangle which is covering to our bird so now you might be wondering what does rectangle mean right well you see as these images alone cannot detect collision so why do we need collision it's obvious right like when you're having a game you obviously have to increase the level or you need certain criteria or parameter to decide, you know, a score to have a level of competitiveness. So in order to do that, you need collisions. So in order to have collisions, you need rectangles. So by you, with the help of rectangles, you can detect collision between our bird and our pipes. So let's see how we have implemented that. Okay, so as you can see here, right? First off, we have loaded our image and then we have added our image within the rectangle. And now all we're gonna do is uh, instead of using this bird image, we're going to use rectangle image to add to our application window. So you can see that over here. Okay. So how are we adding this rectangle over here? So first off, we will convert our image, whatever the image is, into our rectangle. And now instead of adding just the image to the blit function, we'll add the rectangulated image. So let us now see how we are adding our background image, bird image to our application window. So to do that, we are going to use something called as main loop. Well, now you might be wondering what is main loop, right? Main loop is basically heart of a program. No matter which gaming framework you take, main loop is always there. 
So what this main loop does is it is an infinitely running loop. So this loop continues to execute so long as you have your application window open. And this loop performs three major tasks. First off, it is always listening to the end user. So what I'm trying to say here is it is ready to capture any input from the end user. In order to do that, it makes use of event loop. Apart from that, it also performs two important tasks. First off is to update the screen constantly. And second thing is to implement the game logic. So let's see where we are updating the screen. This function over here, right? Pygame.display.update. This is something which is used to update your application window. And then in order to update, right? As I've mentioned earlier, if you want a picture to move from point A to point B, it should move in a certain steps. And the steps that it takes, is, it has to be small. So the amount or the time taken to traverse from point A to point B is done by using clock.tick. This is basically something called as frame rate. You might have commonly heard frame rates, right? Frames per second. So what this does is we are basically trying to control the number of times our main loop tries to execute. So with the frame rate 60 here within one second, our main loop is executing 60 number of times. All right, so let's now see how the game logic is being updated over here. In order to have a game logic, right? We we'll use oops concept over here. So what I'm trying to say here is whatever the position or whatever we want to change, We'll just use a method, right? Because it enhances the readability of code. So, for example, now we want to see this bird movement, right? So, what I'm going to do is first off, I'm going to pass an object. So, before I discuss the bird movement, let's see why am I passing window over here. You see, in order to add our object or our image to our application window, we have to add it to our window object. So, what is the name of our window object? It's window, right? And then we use this grid function and the name of the image and the position. So similarly, we have to pass our window object, which image I want to pass that is the bird image. And here the reason I'm passing rectangle is because I want the bird to be encapsulated within the rectangle to be added to our application window. So let us now see how this function looks like. So as you can see here, right? So this is something like bird movement. So I'm going to use window.blit. So window.blit will add our image or resources to our application window. So what image I want to add that is bird image. And the position is rectangle. The reason why here you're supposed to add the position, right? So as you can see here, this rectangle also holds the position. Correct. So this is how we are trying to add images. So similarly, we can do it for all the components. So there are basically four components here. That is nothing but our background image. And then we have our pipe, we have the base, and we have the bird movement. Now coming down to detecting the collision. Similar to this, we'll be writing a separate function to detect the collision. So what's going to happen over here is every time two rectangles when they collide each other you can capture their collision by using pipe dot collide rectangle and this basically returns you a boolean value. So rather than talking of more about theory on this let me try executing the code and see how this collision would look like. So before we do that let me just give you certain parameters. See if the bird rectangle dot top that is nothing but if our bird goes above our application window a message will pop out saying exceeded upper limit and the same goes for the bottom one it would say exceeded lower limit and if it collides with any of the pipes it would say collided so let's execute our code so as you can see here right so we have a bird which is moving along y axis okay you know as long as i'm within the parameter of our collision there is no message popping out so let me slightly move up you'll see that a message says over here exceeded upper limit so similarly if i go down now you will see that you know exceeded lower limit and now if I collide with any of the pipes it would say collision. So now you might be wondering right how am I giving input over here. Well for this I'm going to make use of event loop which you can see over here. So what happens here is every time I press the key down it is asking which key is being pressed down right. So that is nothing but up key. So every time I press the up key a position of a bird is being reinitialized. Okay similarly if I press on the quit button right. So running becomes false in order to terminate our application. Make sure you use pygame.quit. All right guys with this we come to the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any questions, please do mention them in the comment box below until next time. Goodbye and take care. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!